Independence Day! Today, we celebrate our Independence Day! This is gonna be a follow-up to my last video. If you didn't see it, link in the description below. And today, we're gonna continue by making a battle map using Dungeon Painter Studio. All right, before I get into the time lapse, let's go over the basics here. First thing we should probably go over is mods. So here you see all of the workshop, uh-oh. I'm missing. So you go to the Dungeon Painter Studio Workshop and you can find all of the tile sets you want here. I'd probably do the most subscribed. See, I have them all selected. Then you'll go back into Dungeon Painter Studio, go to mods like I showed you, and then make sure that all of the workshop uploads you subscribe to are installed. And that way you'll have them all down here to choose from. Objects and textures. To do textures, you do ground and floors up here. You can do square, circle, and then in this tool you can make specific patterns and then you got to click on the beginning to close it up over here you've got stick to grid and allow half if you have stick to grid it will only go to the grid points if you have allow half choose you can go halfway through the grid points and if you click stick to grid off you can just go wherever you want more detailed we have the puddle tool blurry and smoothness you'll want to use so say you're making like water or something you want it to blend in with another texture turn up the blurriness and the smoothness close it and then boom let's get another texture here this is a good time to talk about layers grasses on top if we put it over it'll cover up but if we put this floor over the grass the grass will be on top and then we can talk about groups say i want to group both these together shift click them group now they'll all move together and this is how you keep things organized in dungeon painter studio and then you've got this tool i don't use too often it's the terrain tool where you can click individually and there's different types of brushes and then we've got the walls so what i normally do is say i'm trying to make a wood wall i'll go down to search here and type in wood now keep in mind it's not going to show absolutely every single thing you have unless it's a short amount it only shows a certain amount of search items here in this bar if you're really looking for something you might be better off just going through and looking for the individual textures we want to make a wall we're on grid boom we've got a wall this is similar to the polygon tool the polyline tool you can do specific patterns bring it back closed the arc tool is pretty cool for a rounded you can go here to both ends and then you can pull it out however aggressive you want your arc to be boom and then click and you're done before we get to objects the basic controls just your grabber the move tool you've got your rectangle selection tool grab all of them and then rotate say we've got all the selected we can do 90 degrees 90 degrees 90 degrees 90 degrees 45 degrees back to 45 flip them vertically Vertically, flip them horizontally scale yeah you can do this I don't really mess with it like that how I normally scale things transition into objects let's do weapon boom ballista so what I normally do for scale is the scale slider here I'll bring it up and if you're placing multiple whenever you click this first one it'll go back to default 100 scale so if you want to do really big and do multiple lock scale that way you can do it like that brush object tool man I have never really needed to use this but there there you go you can do it like you do with the terrain tool and i guess it has a frequency and scale slider as well lines and text this is good for drawing like an outline say you want to build something and you don't want to go ahead and put all the actual textures down you can go ahead and do a rough draft with these lines the spline tool it's like an arcing line tool and then we've got text pretty self-explanatory boogaloo bring the size all the way up boom and then just go to your move tool move it around where you want everything i posted here is showing up and the right and to keep things organized you're going to want to make groups and then double click and you can name your groups and then you can go into this group and make more groups keep it organized lastly i guess we should talk about exporting i normally have coordinates off but i normally have the grid on you could take that off if you wanted but i use grid for my D, &D sessions the entire width of things you've placed it's going to make a circle around that but say you want to make it bigger what i normally do for my base is I'll type background and do this gray here. Let's just say we want to make it 90 by 90. Go all the way down. Boom. 
Oops, cut that out. We're inside our groups. Careful, make sure you're organized. Now put that all the way to the bottom so everything's covered. Now when we go to export, it's gonna have all this to choose from. Keep that in mind. You might wanna make a background larger than what you're actually doing if you wanna export something you're making. Then you do create PNG, pixels per square. This is how detailed you want it to be. Obviously, the more detailed, the more time it'll take to export and the higher definition it'll be. Then you just do create PNG. Make sure you save when you're working. You'd hate for something to happen and then you lose all your progress. It does do backups though, and it seems for me they're going to my recycle bin, which is nice because I normally just trash them when I'm done anyway. All right, let's get to the time lapse of the elephant garden. All right, so I created a rough draft for my players in game. This is our Adventures in Aramath campaign, and the druid created a druid craft village you know just some rough draft stuff and i wanted this map to for them to be able to draw and show me what they wanted the elephant garden is in the savannah overlooking a mangrove swamp southwest of the metropolis of arameth and see they drew an animal watering hole for the elephants farms with an irrigation channel a well dug and a lot of it was filled with a decanter of endless water got the town hall the houses the farms fruit trees and on the east in the mangrove swamps you've got the fish farm there and a lot of those trees are guard posts so we open up dungeon painter studio open up see the rough draft i did i called it savannah hill outpost but in game they named it the elephant garden so i'll go ahead and change that boom open it up and here we are. This is the rough draft. So I'm going to uh, remove those hills. I'm going to expand it all. Start with some grass texture. Do the mangrove swamp texture. I was copying and pasting the grass just to make it go faster so I'm not placing it individually. Then I did the savannah hills. Make sure we have our openings in the north and then a drainage for the irrigation in the east. Go all the way around, complete it. I took the grid off so I could match them up perfectly. Then I got some grass texture because the irrigation has caused some fertile grass to show up. Boom, watering hole, did the pit, some rocks, fill in the water, waterfall, waterfall, then connect it with water connect the fertile grass make sure you save your game trees fruit trees in the south defensive shrubs all the way around like the players drew add the well add the central campfire the irrigations running into the swamps do the farms connect them all group them put the trees around that they drew make sure i'm checking off everything put the logs around the fire added the fish nets and i took the opacity down to make it look like it's underwater added some fish under there make sure you're saving double check everything in game draw the warehouse town hall houses then i put some construction materials down like the elephants are dragging it and then export Like we talked about, it'll take a while. All right, so here I wanted to make the mangrove swamps more detailed and I don't really know what they really look like. So I just went to images and looked. Looks like there's a lots of exposed roots. So I took that to heart and went back in game and added a bunch of roots. Then I added the branches on top of that. And then I added the trees, brought the opacity down. And then exported it again. Boom, go to my maps, overwrite the last save, replace, boom, save, always save, make sure you're constantly saving, do not lose your progress, go in game, right click, find the file you exported, double click, cloud, remember always hit cloud if you want your players to see it, skip because it takes a while, boom, import, skip because it takes a while, loaded. There we go, the elephant garden is created, all based on what my players wanted and drew on the table. 
and I think that has a real nice way of making the sessions more personal and feeling like the players have input. I would love it if I was playing and the DM made like a house for me or a castle for me with my own room individualized, but I think it turned out pretty good. Yeah, elephants in the elephant garden. Elephant drinking out of the watering hole. Oh look, the calf is playing in the water. Whee! Whee! And here are the three, three of the four players that were here that started this. We've got Fenra, the Chrono Wizard, with Ash, her familiar weasel, Amberlynn, the Druid, my brother's character, and Honey, the Barbarian. We recently played a session and they saw the elephant garden in the state that you just saw it. But in our next session, several months are going to have passed. So I have added more. I filled out the warehouse. I decorated the town hall. We've got Overseer Brutus and Lieutenant Murdoch, who they had be in charge of it. I've got the produce written down here. The grains they're growing, the roots they're growing, the vegetables, the fruit trees, and the crops. I've got their houses designed. The druid has her own house. The barbarian, this is his girlfriend got his house the wizard has her house and the fourth character i mentioned talion who died last session and was reincarnated from human to high elf pretty cool he has his own house and the druid also bought olive trees from the metropolis of arameth and started growing those so they can produce olives because the druid is so friendly with all the animals we've got animals all around and everything's expanding and the campaign will continue and i think this is a lot of fun thanks for watching all the way through i hope you liked the video if you did leave a like maybe a comment and hey maybe you'll subscribe. If you do, you'll catch my next video where I'm going to go over how to create an entire world map from the ground up using things I've learned from people like Artifexian and the world building corner. Other than that, I hope you have a great 4th of July. Slim Jones, out.